Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Blacktop Banner, and this is the second live one. So I think uh, Marco Mena said he's gonna fly out sometime and do a live one. Uh, the invitation for people to come and do live podcasts is open and people are accepting. So it's very nice. Uh, here we are, the war table again. And um, I think like if we build a place where it's just the podcast, I'm probably gonna take this table with because it's becoming iconic. Like people are sending in stickers to put on here and I'm sure they're gonna wanna see it. So if we build a podcast or if we move the podcast to its own building, where this has to go, there's no way we can't take it. So this is episode 59 and um, I got a good friend of mine here. We just kind of started hitting it off, talking a little bit here and there. He was coming by, said he'd sit down for a podcast. So here we are. Um, Bob, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Bob Weiss. I uh, own Rock County Seal Coat. And we're out of Jamesville, Wisconsin. So it's competition. Southern Wisconsin. No, I don't hey, know. I'm in Southern Wisconsin. That's competition. <laughs> There's enough for everyone to eat. That's right. We'll You're right. definitely right about that. Yeah. Isn't that crazy that people are like that though, dude? Where they're like, no, no, no. It's like it's so territorial, and they're like they don't want anybody to improve. It's like, dude, if there was a massive thing going on and it was in between you and I, I would probably be like. Bob, will you come help me? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, I don't, I don't want to do this thing. We're on a deadline. So I never really got that concept, I guess. And like you said, there's, ton, there's tons deep. There's tons of blacktop around here, dude. And they keep okay. putting more down. I promise you they're going to keep putting more down, right? Yeah. And also, you and I are kind of a, a little bit of ways. We're about an hour and a half apart. Yeah, so the chances of us actually, I, I, don't, I don't go that way, dude. I don't, I don't want to compete there. Kudos to you for, for competing on that side of the state. But <laughs> there's a lot of guys there, and it's... You guys have been around a while. So you own Rock County Seal Coat, yep. Jamesville, Wisconsin. And uh, how long has Rock County been around? Uh, this will be our fourth season. Okay. Yep. So tell me about how you got into it. Like, how did that start? Yeah, so I started in high school. Uh, I got hired on by a local company just to uh, <clears throat> haul five-gallon buckets around, take a steel broom and clean asphalt and blow it off. Um, I was never the squeegee guy or anything like that, <laughs> so I just carried buckets and did all the grunt work. Yeah. Um, did that for about two summers in high school, and then after I graduated, um, the owner was looking to take on a partner, uh, yep. basically give him money so he could buy a, a second truck and trailer. <laughs> basically give him money, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah That's, so, that sounds like a good partnership deal. Yeah. So hey, I, give me money. <laughs> so okay. I did that. I, you know, I'd, I'd saved up a lot, and, you know, I didn't, didn't spend a ton, so... Gave him what I saved, uh, got a quarter of the company in return. Our deal was uh, five years, got a quarter of the profits for five years, and then got my initial investment back out. Okay. Um, after the fourth year, going into the fifth year, he said, uh, I'm going to be done. I'm going to close down the business. I'm going to go get a, a full-time job. Something Dang. Like yeah, so I was in a tough spot there. It was, you know, How I was, old were you then when that happened? was about 23 okay 22 23 23 22 yeah so then what did you do after he was like hey i'm gonna be done uh well i had a full-time job at yeah. the time and my what'd mom, you do what was your full-time job uh, i was a production manager at a company called headhunter bow strings they mass produce uh bone arrow strings and uh crossbow strings and cables for Damn. The archery industry that's the first i've never i've never heard that yeah yeah, yeah that's a good. cool gig yeah it was it was good uh family friends of mine they hired okay. me on after college um, so I brought the brought my contract to my boss and I said hey I got a problem yeah yeah and he looked at it and you know as a 19 year old I signed a bad deal yeah I didn't own any of the company assets just a quarter of the name so just like oh, boy, this ain't good this ain't good so yeah 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 go in there like if you want to try to you know get your money out of it try to pick up the equipment for cheap you know you know how to how it works yeah you know all that stuff just see if you can buy the equipment from them and keep it going yep so i did that and then yeah did that for 2019 2020 and then after the 2020 season i quit that job and went full-time seal coding in the seal coding. so how did you like right out of the gate because you, you bought the name too no i, I so you changed the name the company had debt i didn't want anything to be anything to do with that so, so. how so how did you go from that transition from buying the equipment and the company and stuff to what did you say two years later three years later that you went full-time oh yeah two two years so how did you go from just starting it out then to two years later 
your full-time seal cutter? Uh, it just it just got to be too much or I couldn't do both jobs. But the business grew. The business grew. To yeah. where it could support you. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, it worked out that's good. good insights. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's a big fear a lot of guys, you know, because they're like, dude, I'm competing with a lot of guys and we're competing for sometimes you're bidding price and you go into that with that mindset. It's scary because you're like, well, then I got to be the cheapest. It's not the game. Mm-mm. No. And it, 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 when you, if you go into it with that mindset, it's going to be a long, tough road. Right. Oh, yeah. So uh, you got to bid your value. So is that what happened then? You're like, we're going to bid our value and we're going to make it happen. I've raised my prices every year since I've started. I was probably the low price in town or one of the lowest. Yeah. Out. And I think that's how I got a lot of my initial clients. That's how I did right away. So that worked out good. Cause we, we still did a good job, even though we were a low, lower price point. Yeah. But then they tell their friends and yep. the neighbor comes over and it says, can you do our, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, just once you got your foot in the door and you knew you had a reference and you kind of was like, well, it's a little bit more actually for yep. this and that. And it's funny how you can use that a little bit of additional revenue. If you're smart, put it back into your business. Mm-hmm. And then that thing exponentially grows pretty damn quick too. Yeah. It's kind of wild, man. Well, that's good moves, dude. Cause there's like, like I said, some people are, are, they're scared of that right away, dude. And they're like, well, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm scared to jump, scared to do. So in two years, that's pretty badass. So it's been two years since then. You're four years in. This will be the fourth. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of growth have you seen a little bit since then? Uh, let's see. About five times of 2019. Damn. Yeah. So it's been good. All right. Well, you can probably find Bob at the next MPE when he's teaching how to exponentially grow your seal coating. It'll be <laughs> in room 23B. I do want to get down to that. I was kind of yeah. I didn't go this year. Dude, so. come, on, come down. It's, it's pretty badass. I mean, um, honestly, every time it's the people that make it. Yeah. Um, so like Charlotte in general versus Nashville, I know what people say. They're like, dude, it's Charlotte over Nashville. But we made Charlotte pretty damn fun. Like, like so I'm, I'm happy with that, dude. Like, I'm okay with Charlotte and we got some big stuff planned for Charlotte blacktop banner does and our supporters. So, um, hopefully I can kind of announce that stuff going into the winter and whatnot. And, uh, hopefully it'll bring people down. We're like, dude, I don't want to miss it. So I'm excited for that, but yeah, it'd be good to, uh, to, to get you down there and check some stuff out. I'll tell you what it does. It honestly shows you your own potential of what you can accomplish because you meet people that, are leaps and bounds in front of you. Listen, man, there's always going to be somebody that's done it bigger and better. I'm sure there's one guy at the very, very top. He probably owns one of the companies of the products that we buy. That, I guess, would be the top dog. Yeah. Um, but there's always people that want to come up, too. You know, I remember um, MPE, I want to say Cleveland in 2018. I spoke there. And it might have been even before that. I'm not quite sure. But I remember Daniel from ProLine, we all had, were at a big dinner. I remember Jim Panzahang was there, a couple of the other guys. And Daniel was asking some questions. He just had bought the striping trailer and stuff like that and wanted to grow his business. And now, like, honestly, he's one of my really good friends. There's aspects about his business that I'm chasing where he, where he hit it. Like, dude, he hit a dinger. I'm like, okay, show me how to, show me how to line up. Where's my stance? Yeah. All right. And then... Uh, yeah, you, you can't replace that. There's no amount of money for that. And, and you can't get that anywhere else. So it's definitely worth it for going down there and just, if nothing else, making the connections, but you do get to see some badass equipment Yeah. and dude, there was a robotic crackling machine. There and so, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. there's some bad stuff going on, man. And, uh, I'm excited about that stuff, dude. Cause some of the smaller booths are some of my favorite ones. Yeah. Like we were at world of asphalt here a month ago or so. And there was a, they're going to be on the podcast. I made a video, um, but I haven't announced it or put any content out there about it yet because I'm saving it, but they had a product called Molten and it's, it looked like a kind of like a bazooka, but you loaded in crack filling pellets and it heated it up. You plugged it in, right? So it's for a homeowner, I'm guessing. You plug it in, and then you can use this thing to fill your own cracks at your house and those kinds of things. Huh. Um, so 
that product was there, but also the crack filling product was there to buy too, that you can use in, in direct fire machines and stuff like that. So um, there was a two product phase, but the gun was cool. Now, don't get me wrong. You and I are not going to use that thing, <laughs> but it was still freaking cool. This would be like, dude, somebody really took the time and effort and put thought into doing this. Um, and, then, and it was cool to see. So um, shout out to Molten. Molten. Hopefully uh, you'll be on here soon and we'll, I'll show you guys. It's, it's, it's wild. So talking about equipment and Molten's wild bazooka crack filling gun. Uh, what do you guys got for equipment down there at um, Rock County? Because I know you made a good purchase here recently, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I still have the trailer I started with, which is a, it's an old Neil. Uh, oh, 5, yeah. 550 gallon. Oh, yeah. It's on a 2001 Butler trailer. It's all <laughs> the diamond plates got holes in it. And it's, I just rented the hot pressure washer for a couple of days and got 20 years of sealer off. Oh, so, that's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. So we still have that, but I just bought a, a brand new last year uh, in november uh seal right uh sr 700 uh, extended deck dang dude congratulations yeah thanks that's a big move man yeah that's like, like i can remember like a long time ago now a long long time ago being on those driveways and mopping them on and brooming them on and being like dude one day i'm gonna have a seal right man yeah and i didn't even really get to use it that much cheeks uses it most of the time now oh, yeah. dude so <laughs> i still like it it looks it's still faint it looks nice i guess but yeah he gets to use it quite a bit so yeah that's that's a badass machine man congratulations where did you get it from can i ask you from seal right 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 from them down in awas did they deliver it or did you go get it or they delivered it they delivered it they, someone delivered it so you got it before the price increase too. yeah it's if I, you buy the same one now it's like seven or eight grand more yeah dude you southern nailed it new, southern new catalog I was like yeah. oh, wow good thing congratulations I dude i know yeah i know i heard that they were going up too on prices and i was like dang man because we're kind of where we could use another one mm -hmm. but not quite and i was like Honestly, truthfully, I probably just dropped the ball. I forgot and probably should have, but oh well, it is what it is. I, well, one thing I wondered was like the guys that, with that big of a price increase, if the guys that bought it, the like you, right? Like, let's say you bought yours and then now you want to sell yours. You literally could make five grand right now on that machine if you wanted to buy it. Yeah. But you're not going to be able to buy a brand new one again for what you sell it for, but still. What a crazy concept. If you would have bought 10 of them. Yeah. yeah if you would bought <laughs> 10 seal rights, dude, you would make 50 G's. Yeah. Kind of crazy, I guess. Think about I wish uh, we would have got that memo ahead of time, <laughs> like how far it was going to be jumping. So what else you got um, with besides the two tanks? Uh, two tanks. I just bought a bulk tank. Um, Congratulations six, again. Thank you. Yeah. 6,000 6, gallons. Just picked that up. Uh, the guy was retiring. So dude, you give it two years. You're going to have a building in Lone Rock. You probably buy a podcast. <laughs> dang man cool uh, i also just picked up uh oh ben keep Sick. bragging let's go one of those ben Sick rotary brooms oh yeah i wish i had one of those <laughs> maybe one day when i grew up i'm gonna get one <laughs> did you try it out yet yeah i just had my house what do you think oh it's gonna be a big time saver for yeah us. dude and I... shoulder saver for the guys oh yeah dude yeah. yeah i hear that it's gonna be badass you're just gonna put that on the trailer uh yeah the extended deck you're gonna put it on the truck how are you gonna do it it's, I, it's heavy unit i have a lift lift gate on my truck of course why wouldn't you <laughs> right right of course why wouldn't you so do you got the one because there's two of them it's, it's the the ones direct drive and the ones like hydraulic it's the direct drive it's the cheaper model finally dude i found something you skimped on finally <laughs> dude so uh your bulk tank was eight thousand gallons or six thousand gallons. Yeah. that's a nice bulk tank yeah and the guy it was a guy that had it before yeah, he was a seal coder for like 22 years and he was retiring. Um, so he posted on one of the Facebook pages, used equipment for sale. And I saw it and called him and- How'd you get it there? Uh, we hired, he is a trucker also, so he has a freight broker. So yeah. we used his freight broker and a guy with a 40 foot hot shot on a dually came and rented Easy. a crane to drop it on. And I rented a crane to offload it. And yeah. it, was, it was- We crazy. used a wrecker for ours, dude. Really? Yeah, dude, we used a wrecker. <laughs> like, uh, uh max who's my rep from seal master he was like oh let's hire a wrecker and i'm like dude i seen that tank like you seriously you're gonna hook a record to it? he's like yeah that's what we do all the time dude it was flawless cool yeah i was like oh okay i don't know if we're gonna get another bulk tank anytime soon but if we would the record's just fine for that so so we got all that stuff what is like your favorite hand tools because mm. we got all the big stuff you got benzik you got all your seal rights you got all that stuff like 
what is the one hand tool that if you left it, you'd be like, shit. The wire brooms. Isn't that crazy, yeah. dude? Everybody yeah. says that. If we forgot those, we're going back home. Dude, everybody <laughs> says that. Isn't that crazy, dude, that there's such a, a – it, dude, it's archaic. It's like – it's antique, it right? Those good, street man. brooms, oh, dude, they, there's nothing better. No. And there's – the sad part is there's no substitute, so you got to scrub your ass off, dude. There's, like, nothing there yet. I do know that some people have seen – like, you've seen that um, – steel and echo rotary broom we got the attachment and stuff those, yeah yeah and, and it does okay like the thicker stuff but it's still you still got to go behind it with the steel bristle broom and whatnot i've seen a couple from a long time ago some of those companies made steel bristle rotary broom heads. i would buy it i can't dude everybody it. would buy it i would buy it dude everybody would buy it and i've seen that they used to make them and then they're like well no one even bought them it's like well yeah you guys didn't market right you were probably <laughs> marketing to Homeowners. Uh, to homeowners yeah. or to landscape guys or whatever because let's be honest steel and echo don't market to us you know or, or any of those bigger um po outdoor power equipment companies don't but if they're listening and and i and we i was part of the echo uag group last year and we i had this conversation with some of the r d guys i'm like get us a steel bristle uh, attachment to put on that thing like literally you'll sell all i got to do is mention it and we're going to sell thousands of those things and I don't even care about the cloud of selling them. I just want one for us, for our sake, dude, because yeah. we still get out there and broom, dude. And yeah. when you get out there and you see that impact of dirt, you're like, son of a bitch, because <laughs> you know what's coming. Oh, yeah. The so the boys get all mad at you. Yeah, dude. And you're dying, <laughs> dude. Like before you even put crack filler down, yeah. you're dead. You're just, and it's <laughs> like people always think because we're in Wisconsin that it don't get hot. Like it's not as hot as it is in South. Dude, the humidity on a 90 degree day Brutal. dude it's awful yeah. it's 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 awful that dry heat like in the south like i've been in texas when it's humid and it feels about the same but it lasts literally from mid-june to labor day here yeah. and it's humid as shit dude august and july is brutal but i mean it's par for the course but yeah dude the broom in those big dirt spots the impact of dirt when it's humid kill me yeah that's why I bought that Ben Sig. I'm hoping that helps. Well, now you're going to have to come back and tell us. Sure. You know, send a video and be like, all right, guys, do that. Send a video in and I'll post it to the banner and be like, okay, guys, cool. here's the Ben Sig. We're going to try it out on this shit and make it just a big old pile of dirt and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Cool. That's a good, that's a good uh, pile of equipment, man. Yeah. So we were talking earlier and, um, you know, everybody in this industry wants more leads. Like, like all the time, there's lead generation companies, there's marketing companies, there's people that say they're going to promise more leads or they can deliver more leads or they'll take care of this aspect of it for you so you don't have to worry about it. And they're a professional company, so they can get you more leads, right? Mm -hmm. If anybody listens to me, which you can or can't, I don't know. Dude, <laughs> some stuff don't listen to me about, <laughs> but some stuff you should listen to me about but some stuff don't listen to me about um i'm always a big proponent of people doing their social media themselves because if you don't the personification in it of you and your business which is very very important if your customers are driveway customers and if they're commercial customers to me it's very important that that commercial company feels like you care right and the best way to do that is for you to handle it internally. Now there are guys, um, dude, one of the best in the industry that I know is Jason from Florida Seal Coating. Um, some of their graphics and stuff that is on Instagram, they're super professional. And I'm like, what company? I asked him the other day, I was like, what company does that for you? He's like, oh, it's my, my son's girlfriend. And I'm like, <laughs> are you serious? He's like, yeah, I'm like, dude, I'm like, give me her number. He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, she's so busy. Like, I, I feel like I'm bothering her when I ask her to do it. I'm like, well, whenever she get out of school and has free time, I'm like, I want those exact same ones marked up with Wisco stuff because they're badass. But they also do a great job of um, taking content videos and stuff like that and putting it out. And it really personifies their company. And their company is uh, a homegrown company, but also very, very professional. And that portrays to their clients and prospective clients. I don't know if he's going to, like, if Jason's going to kill me for saying this kind of stuff, but, dude, they work for NASA. Yeah, dude, NASA, Disney, like, 
he showed me some videos and he's like you're not supposed to be showing me this top secret <laughs> no he didn't really say that but um yeah so i mean for those companies to reach out to a company and say well we want you to do it um is stellar you know it really it, in the best way the way they've always done it is through internal social media right so there are big companies dude they call us all the time and or they'll email you and it'll say me seeing your social <laughs> i can help or some shit like that right and um there are other companies that call and they're like hey we'll take care of that for you um and i understand that there's older guys in our industry there's a new guard coming up you yourself are young i'm gonna say i'm middle-aged finally i'll say it i guess <laughs> i'm not i don't believe i'm there yet but I was kind of on the top end of that. So I understand it. And everybody below younger seems to get that concept. Right. But yet there's these older business owners in our industry that know that it's a thing that needs to get done, but don't know how to do it. And it's really intimidating. So then they, I feel like these companies um, prey on those kinds of guys mm -hmm. because there's no real way for them to understand how the leads came from there. Right. Um, tell us, because you, you have an experience with that is what I'm leading to is that you have an experience with it. Um, if anybody follows, uh, Stephen Brainy, who's a podcast contributor from time to time on our YouTube and things, and has been a podcast, podcast guest and a good friend of mine, he posted the other day about that. Like if you're, if there's a company that you're hiring a marketing company, he posted on his LinkedIn and it says this, they don't know what the hell they're doing. And I, the, some of the stuff we talked about that company you had kind of did the same thing. So don't say the name of the company because we don't want to get in trouble, obviously, but it's a big brand company that wanted to take care of your social media. Uh, tell us about that experience. Sure, yeah, they, they called me up and uh, basically you know, they're offering uh, website design and then you have a whole uh, login and it gives you a dashboard. You can track uh, invoices, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of those yeah. options out there. Um, client portal clients can message you right through um, yep. right through the the portal um, guy came in in a pinstripe suit to my house you know and he was selling me on it and i bought it yeah and uh they also dude, everybody wants to look professional yeah. dude everybody wants to seem professional and have things done easier yeah yeah and that's what he sold and then they were also going to manage my uh social media postings okay um so they did that and it was you know monday wednesday friday they would pump out at whatever time yeah um but after a couple months it was like i've tried going back and forth with them saying this is not working it's not working like it i've had friends reach out like what's wrong with your facebook you it know, don't seem right yeah yeah it don't seem right it's like stock images half the time it made me look like a paving company yeah 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 you it's know? there's a disconnect big disconnect. big disconnect yeah so finally after I talked to them a bunch and things didn't change, I just ended with them. Yeah, and uh, it. yeah, hired a local company out of Janesville to manage my Facebook and my SEO, and that's yep. it. Told them I'm, I'll take care of my Facebook. Yep. And they were cool. They're like, yeah, we totally understand. That's an important part. You should have the personal touch with it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do your SEO. We'll, you know, if you need changes on your website, you let us know. And it's crazy. Yeah. Dude, they're, they're great. Then they work out good for you so far? Yeah, I mean, I've only had them since January. But you can already sell? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, see we hired uh, Jason from 28 Circles, who's a sponsor of the podcast. Thanks, Jason. Um, I knew him before he sponsored the podcast. Oh. So it, it had nothing to do with we, us using him because he sponsored the podcast. I just knew of him. He was very personable. He called up. He didn't even try to sell me on it. He just was asking insights on how he could tap into our industry and help guys out. And that was it. And we didn't do business together for a year, probably, right? Um, until leading up to the point where I got word back that some of the guys that he had helped, it's working great. And he offers those same things, kind of like you're talking. But Jason will literally text me every other day if something's up. If something's wrong, I can call him. He's like, oh, yeah, we're going to fix it. Um, so him and his team at 28 Circles do what that local team does for you, but they can do it on a national scale which is something that's very hard to find as you found out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have, uh, I have had hired a company out of Illinois that put me on Google, did that kind of stuff. And it got me to there. Yep. And then they're like, well, we can take care of your social media and all that stuff too. And I was like, no, dude, I love doing my own social media. You know, I'm there. You're not going to take that from me. And I, I, I've watched some of the stuff they've done and there's no way they could have done it 
correctly. Like you said, they have a stock images. Yeah. It, the, the roller, it only shows the roller wheels on the pavement mm -hmm. because I the know. roll, yeah, yeah. Dude, everybody <laughs> has that one. <laughs> one. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Because the actual company name is on the paver. You know what I mean? And then it's guys' backs with uh, a, vest a vest on and they're looting blacktop or something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Dude, everybody's had those same images. Yeah. So it's it's funny that we're talking about this because, dude, in 2018, I was at Cleveland and I spoke on social media. And literally, I only thing I knew was what I had done and that it had worked. So I literally talked about Wiscode and what I had done and how it had worked. And I remember getting the view reviews back and I had good reviews. But there was still some of the stuff in the comments once in a while where they're like, yeah, my buddy took that class and said all the guy did was talk about himself. It gave no value. And then, yeah, I have good friends like uh, Mark Estrada, uh, Captain Striper on Instagram, and um, Zach Lovett, his partner, where they took what I talked about in that, um, they took it to heart and they applied it to their business. Dude, they are killing it in Houston. It literally changed their business around. And I didn't get nothing off of that, dude. All I knew is that this helped me. If I could help somebody who was struggling the way that I struggled up until that point, for sure, I'd be willing to do that. And it, that same kind of sense of giving is why the podcast exists, why everything exists. And that's why I like, I like for you to share that story because I want someone to hear that first before they jump in, dude, find somebody local, somebody you can go visit because if shit's hitting the fan and it ain't working and it's dead, you can go be like, hey, man, what the hell, dude? You got somebody's image of somebody with a backpack blower on blowing leaves yeah. saying that we're going to yeah, under our cleaning section. Like, dude, this ain't going to work out. And I think that that's a, a really good lesson to learn. It's like, dude, don't go that route, man. Yeah. So we were kind of talking about that, you and I. <clears throat> so I always like to take everybody on a tour when they come here. Mm -hmm. And uh I was kind of talking, somehow we got on to talk about social media, right? And it's kind of transitioned really weird because um, I used to advise people to post to their business page. And then, what'd you see? Nothing. All right, just checking. Uh, I, used to, I used to advise people to, hey, post to their business page and then share that business page. But now I feel like the way it's transitioned to, people really aren't looking at Facebook pages very much anymore. Um, they might type it in Google and that Facebook page come up, but they're not specifically looking at Facebook pages on Facebook. And even when people share them, that extra click that they have to do don't always happen. So for me, if you're proud of what you do and you don't mind sharing what you do business-wise, throw a business post of what you're proud you, you guys are doing on there on your personal page. Don't say, call us today for a free estimate or whatever. Just show what you're doing, man. And so people are going to know that that's you. It becomes synonymous. One big goal, like I always say, and that I told you is that here, when people want to get asphalt maintenance done, they go to Google and they type in Wisco. They don't type in seal coating near me. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the goal, man. That's, like, that's really the awesome. goal. Like, that's the goal that we all should be shooting for. And dude, if anybody out there is like, how do I do that? Call me, message me, dude. I'll get back to you. I'll, I promise. I'll, I'll tell you the best way that I know how to do it. It doesn't always work. It's a battle. It's a, it is a battle, but if you stay persistent long enough that you, you crack through that ceiling and it works out good. So we talked about like you going on the, the tour here in Lone Rock, right? The Wisco tour or Blacktop Painter tour. However, we're going to, I don't know, dude, we're, we're going to have to figure out how to market that. <laughs> and um, you, so you hit me up. You're like, hey, I'm going to be heading up north. What brought you here? What made you want to come here and, and visit and hang out, you think? Uh, well, I've kind of just gone about my business alone Yeah. ever since it started. So it's lonely. Yeah, kind of just looking to connect with others in the industry. And, you know, if I find something that's working out, I can share it. If other yeah. people are, you know, it's just it's crazy net, asset, net, dude. networking. And like I said, I want to get down to the pavement expo and, yeah. and meet people down there. And Dude. It's epic. I'm going to try to build something here that's like a Mecca so that people can come hang out and visit. It wouldn't be cool if we did like a, um, I don't know how we're going to put it, like the asphalt gathering or something like that. Where like everybody came here, we all hung out for a couple of days, had speakers, had people that came and showed up and it's in this little town, dude. That'd be, 
there's plenty of space here. You've seen that. There's plenty of space. So it'd be badass to do that. Maybe that's what, that should be one of the goals that goes along with the museum or whatever else I was going to say. But yeah, dude, I mean, the, what, what you're hinting at is completely flip-flop from the way it was 20 years ago, I would say. Um, maybe 10 years ago, even. Um, the introduction of the Facebook groups, like the ones I started and things, have kind of made it a, a easier to swallow that the community is better together. And we're a lot better feeding off each other. Though I believe because of that, the quality of work has went up because no one wants to post shitty pictures because they're going to get straight razzed, right? <laughs> so the quality of work goes up. Also, they're learning the quality of work by just being in those groups and seeing better practices and things yep. what a result of it of what has happened not only because of inflation but because of the higher quality of work i believe that people are starting to charge more value like you said you were cheap at first and then you're like well dude we're bringing more value and we're busy i'm gonna keep raising my prices we did the same thing here man like i went and bought my seal right from uh jerry dolly in um colorado Springs. he's like dude you're the best He's like, why you should be charging like you're the best. And I'm like, you're right. Yeah. Should I should be. And um, we do. The funny thing is people pay it too. They do. Yeah. They I think what happens is the customers realize that they're buying more than just you seal coating their driveway, right? They're buying your reputation, they're buying your um, PR, you know, with your public relations. They're buying the fact that they know they can come to your place and find you, you know, if something's up. Um, so yeah, the value goes up. Therefore, they're willing to pay more for that value. And that's the value difference between guys that get it and guys that don't is it's that kind of thing. Um, so dude, I'm glad you came to visit. Yeah, thanks for- thanks Dude, for anytime, time, anytime, right? dude, anytime. You call anytime if we're hanging out, going to do something or you know that there's a gathering or whatever. And want to see if we're going to go anytime, dude. I'd be glad to have you. Cool. Um, so what's the future now, man, for Rock County? We're just going to keep grinding. We're just going to keep grinding, keep growing. At some point, I'm going to need to, uh, I got like a four-car garage in my house that I keep all my stuff in. So <laughs> that's not going to work uh, for, you know, probably work this year. But after, yeah. after that, I'm going to- It's a common step, dude. I showed you the garage where I started. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, where I keep my bulk tank. Uh, it's just storage units outside of the storage unit okay um the guy is going to be popping up a 60 by 90 clearing building okay for rv storage and okay so, you know, figure yeah out what man we can work that out a little bit a little office space and yeah so might do that cool. might might try to find a place similar to like your first place that you were traveling cool. or something and, yeah. yeah so what about advice you got any advice for anybody hmm. like just starting out yeah or? yeah um I would just focus on quality. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do a good job. Make straight lines. And Everything comes after that. Don't water your material down yeah. too much. And yeah. You're not really saving that much money, dude. No. Pick yeah. up the phone. Don't don't let 20 voicemails pile up. Yeah. That's, then, a, that's a brutal one. Yeah. Pick, pick it up or at, at the end of the day, call everyone back. And yeah. I'm sure I've lost a lot of jobs just because <laughs> I waited four days to call them back or yeah. something. Yeah. So. That's how it goes. Yeah, good advice, man. Very good advice. All right, we're gonna do a card deck clip. Okay, ready? Right. So you're gonna, I'm gonna pick one, and then we're gonna go from there, dude. The last one was, uh, was Josh Rigsby, and or no, yeah, it was Josh Rigsby. There's gonna be a podcast in between yours and mine, but Josh Rigsby was the one I recorded before this. So his was, uh, is a hot dog sandwich, and uh, it was great. So, oh, we better not do that one, man. <laughs> Woo! All right, ready? What's something that people think makes them look cool, but actually makes them look ridiculous? Ooh, I'd say that gold chain. All right. You're right. That is played out, dude. It's totally I hope you're not wearing one. No, I'm not. Definitely not. <laughs> Cheeks might be, dude. It's balling out there. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. It has that Miami Beach yeah. vibe, especially where we are. Yeah, I'm with you on that. All right, man. Cool. All right. Thanks, Bob, for joining yeah. us, man. Thank it's you. been epic. Yeah. So Blacktop Banner, we speak asphalt, as you can see. And as always, we want you to seal it, pave it, stripe it, and kill it. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun.